Are you ready to own the future or be disrupted by it? Charles Darwin said that extinction is the rule and survival is a choice. Companies around the world, from HSBC and Alibaba to Facebook and Visa, invite me to speak about Mindset 2.0, a disruption mindset to change your mind, change your work, and change your world. I believe the greatest threat we face today is not robots replacing us, but a reluctance to reinvent ourselves. To win in this new age, you must scale what makes you more human. Empathy, intelligence, curiosity, play, grit, and courage. The old rules just don't apply anymore. Now, not taking a risk is a risk. How do you change before a crisis forces you to? How do you fight complexity with simplicity? And which of mindsets, operating models, assumptions, and behaviors must you let go of? I want leaders to think, feel, and act differently. My keynotes excite and engage up to a thousand people and focus on not just return on investment, but return on intelligence. Consider this fact. Today is the slowest it will ever be in our lifetime. AI, nanotech, and biotech will transform every facet of daily life. But are you ready for what that means for the future of work, leadership, and success? And how do you reimagine today while creating tomorrow? The simple truth is, you can be a leader, a follower, or out of business. Now is not the time to sit on the fence. It's time for action. Because what I see when I go around the world is people drowning in information and drowning in data. And our attention spans are under attack by technology. Are you ready to survive or thrive in the age of disruption? Everybody's talking about disruption. It's become one of those, those buzzwords, and it's lost its specificity. I want you to imagine that an 800-pound gorilla has just walked through that door, and its name is disruption. It represents volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. I guess in the UAE, you'd call it shifting sands. On the left, we have you, purpose, hope, ingenuity, reimagination, and reinvention. Think about how life has changed over the last five years, and think about how it will change over the next five years. However, for me, I think this is the age of wonder. Cars that drive themselves, platforms that anticipate our every needs, robots capable of everything from complex surgery to advanced manufacturing. Let me share a quick story with you. About 18 months ago, I received an email from an executive assistant. Her name was Amy Ingram. The purpose of the email was to organize a meeting with her CEO in New York. It was a very purposeful and professional email, and the meeting was set up. A couple of weeks later, I got to meet Dennis Mortison, the CEO in, in, a, in Starbucks in New York. And he smiled at me. It was a very mischievous smile. And he asked me a strange question. He said, Terence, I've recently hired Amy Ingram. What did you think of her emails? I thought it was a strange question to ask. And so I asked for clarification. And he smiled again. He said, Terence, I've got a confession. Amy's not human. She's AI. And the clue is in her name, Amy Ingram, AI. My first reaction was embarrassment because Dennis had been watching my emails. My second reaction was, am I part of a Netflix thriller like Black Mirror? And my third reaction was, this is the age of disruption. However, I want to argue this afternoon that the history of humanity is a history of disruption. 100,000 years ago, we harnessed fire, which led to language. 10,000 years ago, we developed agriculture, which led to cities and commerce. 5,000 years ago, we invented writing and the wheel, which led to the nation state, democracy, and city warfare. What's the difference then today? Well, I think we're at a really fascinating inflection point, where now, we're seeing this combination, this convergence of superpowers, cloud, artificial intelligence, IoT, and this is creating unprecedented risk, but also unprecedented opportunity.
I would go as far as saying that now not taking a risk is a risk. So what's the difference? Well, it's no longer about big or small. It's about fast or slow. And there's a number of mind, mindset shifts you all need to think about individually and within your organizations. For example, economies of scale to economies of speed. Industries to ecosystems. Hierarchies to networks, because of course ideas travel faster through networks. And managers to leaders. Here we can see the number of years it takes for an organization to reach a unicorn or $1 billion status. It's dropped from an average of 20 years to less than two years. And Stuart Butterfield at Slack, the workplace app, holds the, one of the records for the fastest growing unicorn, reaching a $1 billion status in less than six months. A couple of months ago, I got to visit Shenzhen, another great place to visit like Dubai, where you're already living in the future. They call it DBS. You design things, you build them, and you ship them. And I got to meet an organization called Ant Financial. Wow, what an organization. Ant Financial uh, competes with WeChat for the $17 trillion uh, online payments market. And between Ant Financial and WeChat, it holds a 93% market share. What makes it really fascinating, though, and I think is a great concrete lesson and example of what disruption can create, is that Ant Financial only has 5,000 employees and a market valuation of $158 billion. That's four times as much as Barclays and twice as much as Goldman Sachs. Now, here's the difference. I met John Flint, a CEO of HSBC, and they have a 150-year history and over 285,000 employees, and they have a lot of legacy. So what does the future hold? And how do you ensure that you, know, you don't just survive, but thrive in this new reality? Let's take a peek into the future. This is Clio. It's one of uh, Ant Financial's prototypes. Its mission statement is to serve 2 billion customers, 2 billion within the next 10 years. It's a financial eco ecosystem, a stack which aims to process a million transactions per second. Now compare that to Visa on a good day, which can process 2,000 transactions per second. This is like a Siri for banking. And we heard from Ramez some uh, statistics around millennials. Well, in the next 10 years, millennials will make up over 75% of your work workforce, representing over 1.9 billion, a 1.9 billion person opportunity, 1.9 billion millennials. You can see how if you've got a choice between going to your bank or going onto an in, uh, on the website to log in and just having an interactive conversation with Clio to find out how much you've spent on Starbucks for the last month, well, it's a no-brainer. And I think this is a great example of how we can turn disruption into opportunity. So let's take a strategic pause. We've got these, this 800-pound gorilla, uh, gorilla on the right, and it creates tremendous risk. But on the left is you and your organization, and you have a choice. But here's the challenge. What got you into business could put you out of business. And so a key takeaway this afternoon is the art of reinvention. What's the answer? Well, become a blitz scaler. And here are some great examples. Whether it's Elon Musk putting humanity on Mars, or Bill uh, and Melinda Gates Foundation, whose mission is to wipe out malaria, or uh, Calico and DeepMind and Verily at Google, whose mission is to win the war against cancer, these are blitz scalers. And they ask three questions every day. Number one, growth. What new products, services, business models have you introduced? And the core metric is revenue outside of the core. Question number two, reinvention. In the last 18 months, how much have you reinvented your organization and the DNA of what you do? And that can include new growth engines. So growth, reinvention. And question number three is financials.
Can you demonstrate a strong revenue compound annual growth rate or strong stock compound annual growth rate? Can you demonstrate that you've moved your organization from a slow track to a fast track? Apart from that, there's a mindset as well. There's a way of doing things, and they think and act differently. They're already living in the future. So I want to give you now three shortcuts, three hacks, three superpowers so that you can scale your organizations and turn disruption into opportunity. Here's the first one. Why is it that last year was a record year for carbon dioxide emissions and extreme weather events such as Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria? Why is it that according to Gallup, the global workforce has an average uh, engagement score of 15%, and 18% have mentally quit the job, but haven't told you. They've mentally quit the job, but haven't told you. Why is it that according to Endelman, every year they publish a, a global trust index, why is it that according to them, 58% of 100,000 respondents agreed with the statement that the business model today is broken? I think the answer is, that there's a crisis of why, our purpose. Think about it. We know what we do. All of us know what we do. Most of us know how we do it, but only a few of us know why we do what we do. And this happened to me in my own life. I used to work in advertising for Saatchi and Saatchi. I was responsible for the code name, the Orange Account. Club tro uh, Tropicana, not Club Tropicana, Tropicana Orange. Sunny Delight, and you've been tangoed, Fanta. One day, I was walking down the street, and a car lost control and ran into a number of people, and I was one of those people. And I nearly lost my life. I was in hospital for over three months. And you know, sometimes it's when you're out of the building, when you're out of the office, that you have your best ideas, or you truly get to re reflect about legacy and what impact you want to make in your life. And I realized that I had to reinvent myself. And so this is the first superpower. Are you exceeding, meeting, or falling behind on your purpose? That's a big question for you to think about. And I recently ran a hackathon on purpose with a bunch of CEOs for them to think about that question. Are we exceeding, meeting, or falling behind on our purpose? So that's superpower number one. Start with why. Superpower number two is trust. I define trust as a confident relationship in the unknown. It's the foundation of every action, relationship, and transaction. But this is not the age of distrust. Think about how you book an Uber, uh, use Airbnb. Um, there are so many ways where we're, used, we're building trust, but there's also a gap. There's a trust deficit in institutions from banking and media to retail and government. So superpower number two is that you need to think about scaling trust in two ways. Internally with your teams to release new levels of energy and focus, and externally with your stakeholders, which includes your customers. If you break down the DNA of trust, it's competence, it's what you do, it's uh, reliability, so being consistent between actions and words, it's integrity, the value system, and it's the empathy, which is the language of leadership. A great empathy test is that next time you're in the lift and somebody's coming towards that lift, do you, one, keep the door open for them, or two, press the button really quickly? to escape. It's a great, it's a really simple shortcut and a very practical and fun empathy building exercise. So superpower number two, think about how you're scaling trust, not just at a, an incremental level, but at an exponential level. Final superpower, a big question for you to ask. Are you a today company, a tomorrow company, or a today, uh, or a tomorrow after today company? 90% of organizations are today companies. They're present focused and they're defending the status quo. Some companies are tomorrow companies and they focus on incremental innovation. The true risk takers, pioneers and visionaries are day after tomorrow companies. 
Think about Amazon and the Amazonification of the world. Amazon stock has gone up 42,000%. 42,000% in the last 10 years. And Jeff Bezos is a serial reinventor and disruptor. So, my final 60 seconds. Let's go back to the beginning. Are you ready to survive or thrive in the age of disruption? People ask me all the time, what makes us human in the age of AI? And I reply, don't focus on artificial intelligence. Focus on human intelligence. Empathy, context setting, imagination, and dreams. Don't take dreams for granted. They will create your future. You'll move next. Thank you.